questions about the Ultimate Top Coat, hang out, I got you covered. Hey guys, I'm Rhonda Draculis with Arcade 3 Designs where we teach you all things epoxy, including countertops, shower panels, and flooring. I get a lot of questions about application method for the Ultimate Top Coat. There is a learning curve and sometimes you may face some issues, either lap lines or maybe you just don't like the sheen that you did and you wanna reapply again. Whatever the reason is, I'm gonna walk you through the steps needed in this video to show you how to do it. All right guys, so I've had several of you reach out to me uh, wanting to know, is it possible to sand and reapply the Ultimate Top Coat? The answer is absolutely yes. So before we sand the countertop, our samples completely down, I wanna show you a trick. And this may really solve some of y'all's issues. I get comments about sometimes the UTC feels like a laminate. It's just not uber smooth like you get when you sand or hone an epoxy surface. You can really get it super, super smooth. Well, let me give you a tip on getting your surface that you've already applied the UTC on super smooth. What you'll wanna do is start off with a 10,000 grit sandpaper. These are amazing. I'll put the link in the description of this video and you guys can get that off of Amazon. What you'll do is you'll wet sand. Wet sanding the UTC with the 10,000 grit gives it the most incredible feel that you can imagine. It's uber smooth. There's a few things that you need to do before you start sanding with your 10,000 grit. One, make sure the epoxy countertop or the UTC is at least five days old. And the reason I say five days, we want the ultimate top coat to be very hard because if not, it's going to gum up and leave residue on your sanding disc. All right, so I like to use 91% isopropyl alcohol. If you have grease on your surface, you're gonna wanna use some sort of degreaser and then follow up with the isopropyl alcohol. All right, so before you get started sanding, uh, I like to use this little interference pad. It's kind of cushion and it really does help with your sanding. Now I have a five inch Sand, sander. Uh, I have the five inch because it's easier for my hands. My hands are small and I really like the size of this. Now our disc are six inch, but that's okay. I make it work. I just kind of go right in the middle of that and then we're ready to go. All right. So one thing super important about this is that you make sure that you wet sand. I actually like to go one step farther and we actually use, uh, instead of water, I like to use the liquid smooth, which is just basically a detailing uh, liquid that we apply once we install countertops. It just gives it a really pretty nice smooth finish and uh, brightens up the surface. So you could either use water or you could use the liquid smooth, which is available on our website. So a couple of things before um, we actually start sanding that you need to be aware of. By coming in with the 10,000 grit sandpaper and smoothing everything out, on occasion, on certain finishes, especially the dark finishes, in certain lights, you may see a very, very slight deviation in your sheen. If you happen to just look at it just right, at the right angle and the right light, you may see what, what I guess I call a flattening look of the surface. It is very, very, very hard to see. And on white, it's nearly impossible. I've done whole kitchens that are white and there's absolutely no issues. On certain black countertops, uh, in certain light, you may see the sheen change. So I advise you before you do your whole surface to do a very small portion of that countertop in an inconspicuous spot and make sure that you like the way it looks. All right, so we do this on all colors, 
and our customers absolutely love it. All right, one more thing I wanna show you guys before we get started is what I'm talking about making the surface super, super smooth. So I have this very uh, high-tech way of showing you guys what I'm talking about. This countertop was actually done, fabricated and poured by our students in one of our uh, classes. So that's why I have just a small little piece. But I've already sanded with the 10,000 grit on this side. And I want you to listen to what it sounds like when you run a stick across it. Now, this side hasn't had anything sanded. Listen to the difference. Can you see how it's kind of grabbing at a few places? It's grabbing my stick. I've got a little nibs on it. Here's the whole thing. This is starting from the sanded to the unsanded. Hear the sound? Smooth. Right there it starts getting rougher. All right, so what we're going to do is take away those little nibs. All righty, here we go. Got my liquid smooth, got my sander, and I'm just going to wet my surface. And again, I just choose to use the liquid smooth because it really does kind of bump up that smoothness. Water is fine. All right, once I've sanded, I'm just gonna wipe off the excess of that liquid smooth. At this point, you could take a microfiber cloth and just wipe down everything, really buff it out nice. Now, I need to do my front edges as well. Be very careful, even though you're using a 10,000 grit sandpaper, you can still burn through your edges if you're not careful. So if you're gonna use your orbital sander, be very, 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 very careful. If not, you can pull it off and just do it by hand. All right, so everything's sanded. We're gonna do our little technical test here. See if you can hear the difference. Nothing grabs and it's very smooth. The main thing is the way it feels though, guys. Night and day, I love it. All right, so you can see that by sanding with the 10,000 grit, you get a uber smooth surface. This applies to the gloss as well. If you have a gloss UTC, same exact process. A white, like I mentioned, or light color is amazing. I've never seen any sort of a sheen change. Uh, dark, you're gonna have to just kind of uh, use your own judgment and decide if you wanna do it on a really dark finish. This is a black finish uh, and it looks amazing. So I would easily easily put this into a kitchen, no questions asked. Alrighty, so now let's say that you have some issues that the 10,000 grit didn't address and you still want to be able to sand off the first layer of UTC and apply either another clear flood coat of epoxy or reapply the ultimate top coat. Either one, you're gonna do the same process to move forward. If you, um, also, if you wanna change the sheen, say this is a matte, say you wanna sand it all off and put a gloss, that you can do as well, and that is actually what we're gonna do today on this piece. We're gonna sand the matte down, and we're gonna apply the gloss. All right, so before you start sanding, you need to understand that you don't have to sand all of the ultimate top coat completely off. You do need to sand very thoroughly, being really careful not to get really deep sanding patterns because you will be able to see that through your next application of the ultimate top coat. One reason we really recommend applying a flood coat of clear epoxy over your color coat is for this exact reason. If you need to go and reapply your UTC, you're gonna have to do this step, which includes sanding everything down. If you don't have that clear flood coat, what happens is you don't have that barrier of protection 
between your ultimate top coat and your color coat and if you're not really really careful you could burn down into your color coat that's why we normally recommend that you do put a flood coat so i'm coming in here with 120 grit and i'm going to sand it very thoroughly and then i'm going to follow up with 220. So I did my first pass with 120 grit. I'll clean off the dust. Now at this point, if I'm still seeing lap lines or I'm still seeing the imperfection that I'm trying to take out, I'll pass over again with 120. Okay, I'm super happy with the way this looks. I don't see any really aggressive sanding marks, maybe where I had something on my pad and it really left deep marks. If you do, you need to make sure that you follow up with your 220, which is what we're gonna do now, and give this a really smooth finish before we go to the next step. So I wanna address a couple of things on your front edge. If you're gonna be using an orbital sander, be very, very careful that you don't burn through. I don't use the orbital sander right here on this curved edge. I'll take it off and do it by hand. Uh, especially if you don't have a flood coat between your color coat and your UTC, I would advise not using an orbital and just do the whole edge by hand. Everything is sanded, 220, super smooth. And now we'll clean with an IPA, isopropyl alcohol. All right, everything is sanded, it's clean, it feels really, really good. And the way that I check to make sure that I have sanded down far enough to remove all of the imperfections is I'll just get my isopropyl alcohol or even a wet rag of water will work the same. And I wet my surface. That wet surface for just a moment is going to uh, resemble what it's gonna look like when I reapply my ultimate top coat. So if I can see the imperfections when I put that wet water or alcohol on top, then I need to sand down just a little bit more. If not, I'm good to go to the next step, which is to reapply the ultimate top coat. And on this one, we're gonna do the gloss. Hey you, if you like this video, pause the video right now, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for future notifications also. So before you start guys, you wanna make sure that all of your supplies uh, are ready to go. Because remember, once you mix A and B together, you're on a time frame schedule. If you wanna see a full length, very detailed video where I walk you through the application method of both the mat and the gloss see the link that will be in the description of this video all right so we are doing the gloss and i've already done my calculations and i know exactly how much of the utc we're going to be mixing remember it's a two to one i am doing four and a half ounces so i'll be doing three ounces of a and an ounce and a half of part b fun fact part b whether it says gloss or matte are interchangeable between the two sheens. It's actually the same product. You'll want to mix A and B together prior to putting the water in. Another fun fact that I've found is to add warm water, not hot, but warm water as opposed to cold water. It just really does help the mixing process. You can see that gloss is very, very thick. So adding the water is crucial and all of that information will be available in the video as well as a pdf that we have available for you guys on my website that'll show you the exact ration ratio that we use all right we'll be adding our water i add a little bit at a time making sure i really scrape the bottom of the cup so i get all that material thoroughly mixed i've also prepped my pan with press and seal, which makes for a very easy cleanup. 
All right, everything's mixed up. And make sure you check your stick, guys. There'll be a lot of material on that stick that's not mixed up properly, so I scrape my stick and then re-stir. All right, looks good. All right, I have two rollers prepped, dry and wet. Here we go. All right, so the key is to really saturate that wet roller so that you have plenty of material to start off with. All right, so we wanna make sure that we apply plenty of the material on the surface to begin with. You don't wanna stretch out that material too thin. That is one of the main reasons you get lap line. I'm still with my wet roller. Now what I'll do is I'll back roll with my wet roller to remove any of the hard lines that my wet roller left. We don't wanna over roll though guys, just very lightly roll with that wet roller. I'm gonna come around to the front. I'll do my top of the edge first, then I'll run and do my flat edge. All right, once that's done, I'll come back very lightly with my dry roller, slightly overlapping, and I'm literally just putting enough of that weight on the roller to help it roll smoothly. Don't worry about lap lines that you may see while it's wet. If you try to remove those lap lines when it's wet, guys, you'll overwork the product. So make sure, trust the process, and let it dry and you won't see those lap lines. All right, so I hope I answered some of your questions. Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out our YouTube video where we show you very detailed instructions on the application of the Ultimate Top Coat. All right, so the Ultimate Top Coat and the rollers can be purchased on our site, rk3designs.com. And don't forget guys, like this video and subscribe to our channel. It's really gonna help us out. And remember, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative.